So I am kicking this vlog off exactly where we left off on the last vlog. So two minutes later, I am still watching the storm outside, but I have to prep for top drawer, which we are leaving for tomorrow early in the morning. Here is my little stand. I've probably shown you before. So that is the general look of everything. That's the one wall and these two walls are kind of going to be like that, if that makes sense. So I need to go through everything on here again, make sure I've got all the cards printed and the art prints, which I need to print now. Um, stationery, the shelves, I'm still painting downstairs. Um, the tables, chairs, everything accessory wise, and then the tools to put everything up. Um, that'll be up to my partner to do that. Oh, yeah, lots of things to do. Um, so let's get started. So I've printed all my um, product codes on stickers like this. So then I'm going to put them underneath each and every card on my stand just to make it easier to know what code is what um, in case someone would like to place an order or inquire about a certain card and things like that. And I've also printed off my card clasps so that I can put them on some cards like on the table maybe just to show some people how they are packed with a card clasp or a sallow or just without anything. And here is all the greeting cards. They're currently without envelopes, but I need to go through them all and check that I have every single card that I need. I've got two of most just in case. Um, I just need to pay them with their envelopes now as well and then pack them. So I'm just going to print my art prints now, but I'm waiting for my Mac to turn back on because I unplugged everything last night. I woke up at 5am and decided to plug in all my uh, devices, so my phone, my iPad, my Mac, just in case uh, like we had a power cut and I had no way to contact anybody. That freaked me out. And then I thought, how is Mochi going to go out for a wee if the wind is too strong? So I got him up at five o'clock and took him out for a wee before it got really bad. Um, yeah, so I'm just, I'm just tired. <laughs> so I'm going to print the art prints now. There's only four of them. They're just for display purposes, really, on my stand. Um, but so that I'm just going to blue tack them on. I think nothing fancy, but it'll still be the same paper that I use in my art prints. And I can say that they come in different sizes and stuff like that. So these are the art prints I'm going for. I think London and Cardiff will be really nice. And then we have Paris and Tokyo. I've just realized in the icons collection here we have every occasion uh, baby boy baby girl uh, gender neutral valentine's day baby girl baby boy birthday best dad new home uh, well done but we don't have to the best mum so am i really going to design a new card a day before the trade show probably this is the situation um but so they'll be yeah not... i think it's snowing or hail this weather is crazy today so i just designed a last minute mother's day card i didn't film it my tripod is broken so i can't put my phone anywhere and, and film processes at the moment but i'll show you what it looks like so this is the card. It's the same as the icons theme by here. So I got to the best dad and then we have to the best mum. And I just popped in some flowers. I just thought of my mum and what she would like. So flowers, cups of tea, sweets, um, yeah, presents, you know, balloons, just a nice celebration. Very, very girly. Um, it's just what she would like. So I hope that that is nice and finishes the collection. Thing like a last minute card design the day before a trade show. 
um, but my cards then will all be packed with their envelopes. I need to put them in a box and then I need to pick out my stationery and enamel pins. So I'm hoping, well, I'm going to definitely take a couple of each product. So two of those, three of those, just in case something goes wrong and one's damaged or bent and stuff. Here is my vinyl signs. I'm worried about putting these up. I don't think they're going to look the best, but we'll see. Uh, this box I've wrapped in wrapping paper just to put on the desk, maybe with like a basket on top. Um, the prints, notebooks, belly bands. Uh, business cards and now I'm about to make a digital order form. I've only ever sent order forms via email. I've never taken one in person and last time at the trade show in Spring Fair I had a clipboard and like a physical paper order form. I didn't place any orders at the time. Um, looking back now I know why. I was a newbie, a fish out of water. I still feel like that. Um, I'm a bit more established now um, but I'm thinking a digital order form on my iPad will be more, it would just look better and it would be easier. And then if someone, if I should be so lucky to get an order on the day, I can pop everything in, the information on my iPad, on a spreadsheet, and then email them when I get back to the hotel and things like that. I'm really out of breath. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do now is make a spreadsheet. So currently taking apart my studio because I thought I had spare desk legs and it turns out I don't. So I have to take the legs from the desks in my studio to take with me for the desks at the trade show. So this is the current situation. We're taking these legs here and those two legs there. So yeah, it's a bit of a mess. <laughs> I can't believe how chaotic everything is. So this is everything to be packed in the car currently. I've managed to fit most things in these two boxes here and they will go underneath the tables once everything is set up. Um, I'm just looking for last minute pieces. Last minute pieces such as a level, um, a measuring tape and things like that.
Move it to the left a bit. Move your arms then. Other way. Excuse the state of me. Um, I've not long got back from London. It is Tuesday today and we got back. Actually, yeah, we've been back for like a week. We got back Wednesday night. Um, I haven't spoken to the camera in so long. The trade show was such an experience. And then we also ventured out into London on the Wednesday because the show ended on the Tuesday. Um, we did so many things and I've just been playing major catch up since getting back. I haven't had a chance to film because it's been a lot of a lot of admin, a lot of emails, so not exactly exciting things to watch anyway, but I have a lot of news. Basically it went really, really, really well. Um I suffered from major imposter syndrome the first the first night, like insane. I didn't sleep at all. I was like literally shaken from head to foot in the bed thinking why am i doing this what what am i thinking um but it ended up being really great so i'm just getting my nails done my mum oh god they look awful my mum is kindly treated me to get my nails done so i'm gonna do that and i'm gonna get home um pack in patreon goodie boxes for february i'm a bit late it's the first of march today um but i'm a bit late because of everything that's going on so packing them and sending those out and then still getting back to emails and admin and lots and lots of boring behind the scenes tasks. since I have filmed anything since Top Draw. I think I filmed coming home and maybe getting my nails done and then nothing since. Um, we come down with a cold, thankfully not the dreaded C word, um, which is to be expected because the socializing and the crowds and the amount of people at Top Draw and London in general was insane, like nothing we've experienced for the past two years. So. It was expected that we were going to be ill when we came home. So we've just been getting over like a cold. It hasn't been too bad. Um, it's just that on top of how busy I've been since coming home has been a bit insane. So I haven't filmed. However, I have written down everything that we did in top draw, the good, the bad, what happened on each day. And I just want to talk through it because I didn't, I didn't film much whilst I was there because you're in the zone, you're in this business mindset and I didn't really want to whip out a camera and um, potentially scare people away from coming to look at my stand. It's a, a very surreal, strange experience, but um, it was great. It was great. So let's get into what happened. So set up day one, we we travel down on the Saturday. Um, it starts on the Sunday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday is when the show was on for. So we traveled down on the Saturday. And of course that's when the storm hit. I forgot the name of the storm. Glenis, Estrid, Esther. I don't know, there was a storm on the Friday, really bad, uh, trees down everywhere all over the UK. It was, it was a bad, bad storm. So traveling down to London on the Friday, we were delayed by about an hour due to fallen trees everywhere and you have to book your time of arrival at Olympia and I was stressed because I thought we were going to be late so I was trying to text and call and email them saying um, the travel's been disrupted due to the storms, there's trees on the road, uh, we're going to get as quick as we can but can we still unload everything when we get there because my time was booked for half past 11 in the morning 
and we didn't arrive until half past 12 and I didn't want to turn up to London and then be like, no, you can't come in now because you've missed your time. But they were very understanding, so that was fine. We got in at half 12 and started to set up. Um, this is the part I was dreading the most because if something goes wrong in setup, I'm four hours away from home. You know, there's DIY shops and everything around London, but also we had to sort out the ULAS charges, which I was flapping about the night before as well because I didn't know they existed. So basically, the ultra low emission zone is the outskirts of London and I think that's £12.50 a day if you drive in it and then there's the congestion zone which is central central London which is another charge on top if you drive in there. Thankfully we were only in the ultra low emission zone and you don't have to pay depending on what car you drive. If we took my car we wouldn't have to pay because it's petrol and small but because we took my partner's car it's larger and it's diesel which meant we have we had to pay so there was that I was fussing about. So yeah, we turned up and we, yeah, we started to set up and that's when the fear kicked in because you can see everyone else around you setting up and their stands look amazing and people were painting and drilling and people were in um, uh, high-vis vests and we didn't have a high-vis and I was like, was we supposed to bring one? I don't know, but we were fine. So we were just carrying all my little shelves in um, and then we fixed them to the wall nice and easily put my stickers up which took a while they were like vinyl stickers so you just press them onto the wall peel them off but it was a bit fiddly to do here and there then we were putting all my cards on top of the shelves and this was a learning curve because the shelves i chose this time were very very thin so then the card goes on top and then it's blue tack to the walls just nice and like flat but because i chose this method it took a long time to blue tack each and every single card to the wall, to the shelf, to make sure that they didn't fall down. So in the end, they were all stuck there nicely, but took a long time, especially because we were putting one card on every shelf. And then by the end, by the time we got to the end of the shelf, they looked like they were a bit too much this side, a bit too much that side. So moving them around with blue tack was tricky and I won't be doing that method again. Although blue tack is good if you need to make some little uh, changes, maybe stick something here and there. Using it for every card was a mistake. Even though I seen people doing this last time in Spring Fair and I thought that's a good idea, I have done it myself now and I don't think it's a good idea so I won't be doing that again. And due to this reason, due to the, the vinyl and the cards, it took seven hours to complete my stand and my stand was very, very, very simple. In Spring Fair it took me and my dad about two, three hours tops but I had like 20 cards then. It took it took us seven hours to do this and we were so tired by the end of it. I don't really suffer with imposter syndrome much, but this, this was insane. I did not feel like I should be there. I felt like a fish out of water. I was literally in bed thinking, why am I doing this? Why am I here? Everyone's things looked like top, top notch. And I noticed there were some things of mine that I weren't happy with. Um, there's a particular card set, so the star collection of greeting cards. They didn't print properly, even though I looked at them whilst I was home and I was happy with everything. I print everything myself. I'm very proud of the quality that I produce. These cards, whilst I was there, due to maybe the bright lighting or something, even though the lighting is really good in my studio, they just looked really faded and I was not was not happy with those so due to there was that that issue really set me back and yeah I just felt like I shouldn't be there so that was a great way to start the first day so no sleep insane fear day one was actually really quiet the storms impacted everyone's travels and everyone around me was saying that it was quiet but we didn't know what to expect because also there were storms, but also this is the first major event, not the first, but one of the first major events since the pandemic. Um, so we didn't know whether people would want to come or, yeah, it was just, it was quiet. Um, but I managed to get an order that day, which I wasn't expecting because Spring Fair, my first trade show, I had no orders. I was completely naive, I faked confidence and I thought yes I had no orders 
but I've interacted with so many people, businesses, you know, I have a list of contacts now and experience. Whereas this show, I put more pressure on myself because I kind of knew what to expect this time and I really wanted to get some orders. But I didn't expect to have one on the first day, especially because it was so, so, so quiet. Um, but yeah, that was amazing. And it's from a lovely online shop called Green Magpie Edit. So that's all being sent out now and sorted. And then the second day was more of the same. The second day was really boring. It was very quiet on the second day. So this was Monday. Yeah, th th there was no, not much to report on the second day. I had a little wander around. Uh, my boyfriend helped me out massively, meaning that we could take it in turns to man the stand and have breaks. So I had a little wander around that day just to see how big the venue is. And <laughs> I was surprised how small it is because Spring Fair is just huge. Uh, you can walk to one side of Spring Fair and the other and it'll take you like half an hour. But this one is in Olympia, it's just two halls and an upstairs, so it's nice and nice and small, but I had a nice wander around and I had a little wander over to the trend stand because my daisy stationery got chosen to be on the trend stand at the front of the exhibition. Um, so they, I will post like a little video, hopefully I took one. They were on this stand with the positive reinforcement about what that trend is about. And I think that encapsulates Coco Natasha perfectly. I've always been about positive reinforcement since day one. So it's nice that my stationery was actually recognized for that. So I was really chuffed about that. So I had a little wander to go and see that. Not much happened on day two, really. I learned that my flat rate shipping price was too high because I was speaking to a small shop and some people are very intimidating and I, I'm, I'm not. I think I'm quite down to earth and friendly. Um, but some people are very, they're like business-like. They're like, right, what's this? What's your minimum order? What's your terms and conditions? How quickly can you get it to me? Business, business, business. And I'm like, hello. <laughs> so uh, there's some, there were some conversations I found quite intimidating, including this one. So I was telling them my shipping price. Um, so basically I offer free shipping on orders over 120 pounds. And underneath that, my flat shipping rate was 12 pounds because of my stationery. So if someone orders, I don't know, 12 desk pads, that's very heavy. And that's gonna cost me about, I don't know, I don't know. So imagine if I ordered 110 pounds worth of stationery and then I had to ship there. I think it would cost more than 12 pounds to ship. Um, but they were so, so shocked about this, with this price. They said, I have never paid more than 10 pounds shipping in the UK. Um, I pay £12 for international, they were like so taken aback and I was like, I'm sorry, like I am new to this, uh, this is my second trade show, um, obviously because I'm a small business, if you're only ordering a, like a small amount, we can work through, we can work out the shipping, like I'm not, I'm not some big business that says yes, these are my rules, abide by them, so I was very much like, you know, we, we can work something out, like if you only want to order 12 greeting cards I'm very flexible like it's just me I'm happy to do I'm happy to work things out uh, to make things work for both of us and then it's not as if I can it's not as if I have any friends doing this either so I can't ask anyone for advice I'm very much finding things out as I go so that was a learning curve and obviously that was just one person telling me my shipping prices were too high I'm not sure I just, I don't know what the shipping prices are. So then after that, I was like, right, I'm gonna tell people my shipping price is now eight pounds, flat rate, eight pounds. So anything underneath 120 pounds, it is now eight pounds flat rate in the UK. And since coming home and doing some orders, some of my shipping prices have been six pounds and some have been 12. So eight is in the middle. So maybe that's what I meant to be doing, don't know. I'm happy with charging eight at the minute anyway, because yeah, that conversation really took me aback and I just want to make things work. And I obviously don't want to lose, lose a sale over, you know, four pounds shipping. So um, she was very interested in my stationery and my notebooks, these notebooks in particular. Day three, day three was very busy. Day three is how I imagined it to be. People coming everywhere, saying hi and hello to everyone and just talking to so many people all day. That is how I imagined it. 
and I actually had two orders on this day. So I had three orders in total over the whole three days, which is great. I'm not like, I don't know if that's normal. And I can imagine that other people there have three orders a day at least. But considering my first trade show in Spring Fair in 2020, I had zero orders and now I've left with three and three new amazing stockists who I'm so proud to be um, in is I'm so chuffed. And we actually spoke to a very large company as well who I don't, I don't want to name yet just in case something goes wrong, but spoke to a very large company um, who has placed an order as well since coming home. That's why I've been so busy. I've been sorting out insane things. So the three small businesses that uh, purchased from me was the Green Magpie Edit and a lovely shop called And Quirky and another one called Paparus Gifts. Um, they're all totally like my style, so I'm so chuffed to be in them. I sent out everything last week and yesterday, so those orders are fulfilled and they are on the way or they've arrived now. So that was, I wanted to get them done ASAP. And since then, I've been talking to this large company who I know this is annoying, but I don't I don't want to name them yet in case something goes wrong and I don't want to just fall flat on my face, but fingers crossed everything goes okay. They actually emailed me before Top Draw. Then I spoke to them at Top Draw. They came to see me and we were just discussing my stationery and how it's made, where I, where I get them printed from, how quickly I can get the stock in, how it's packed, um, things like that. Um, we went back and forth a few times because it's a large, large company. They'll be ordering a lot. And they asked me, did I have any questions? And I, I, just, I have to be honest, I can't fake I can't fake it. I was like, look, I am, I'm new to this. I only stock uh, small businesses. I've never worked with a large company before. So depending on how much you order, I'm just wondering how I'm going to ship it to you. And they said, oh, it's, it's fine. We collect, we send out a courier, we come and get it from you. So I was like, okay. Okay, so I have to manage all that. Um, we were going back and forth with prices and negotiating and they've ordered 3,000 bits of stationery from me. So this is the biggest thing to come out of top drawer. Um, so I've been, I've been doing that. Um, this needs to all be done by the 20th of March and it is now the 9th today. So I ordered all the stationery yesterday. So 500 A4 planners, 500 A4 weekly planners that are brand new. I haven't sold them anywhere yet. Um, 500 A5 planners, 500 A5 daily planners, 500 to-do lists and another 500 to-do lists. So 3000 products and they're gonna all be shipped to me. And then I'm gonna have to have my boyfriend, my mother, my friends over to put everything into cello bags and put stickers on them because my branding is going on the back of them and then once they're in cello bags i have to organize them into separate boxes label them there's very 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 strict rules when packing these for the company to come and collect them and i had a meltdown yesterday because it was all so overwhelming all the rules all the words that i'm not familiar with um, like cartons, for example, it actually means boxes, <laughs> just things like that. Yeah, so that's why I've been sorting since. This is turned out to be a very long chat at the end of this. I apologize, there's just so much to go through. But yeah, that's why I've been sorting out the very, very large order and then the other orders from the other shops because they are my first orders and I wanna make a good impression. And I'm so sorry I haven't filmed this process of coming home, I've just been unwell, a mess, uh, stressed. There's just been a lot going on. I really wanna do another trade show. I don't know whether that'll be this year because it's very, very expensive. Uh, so far though, I would say Top Draw has been totally worth it for me. Even if this large company didn't find me through Top Draw and they would have ordered if I didn't go, it was it's still been worth it. And I want to do more and I want to build upon this experience and just get better and better. So I've written down all my pros and my cons, like my good ideas and my bad ideas. So, um, and what I would do differently next time. So for example, I wouldn't blue tack my cards next time. I would change my shelves. So I was going around and looking at everyone's stands and seeing how they do it. 
Um, I found the show more relaxed than Top than Spring Fair. I'm not sure whether that's because the show is different or whether people are a bit more relaxed in regards to how they communicate since going through a pandemic. So basically in Spring Fair, everyone was like, prim and proper, um, do not sit down, make eye contact with everyone, say hello to everyone who looks at your stand, don't let anyone walk past without introducing yourself. And it was very like business. Yeah, very, very, you had to put on a front a lot in Spring Fair. And the difference with top draw is I wouldn't say it was relaxed, but compared to Spring Fair, it did feel more relaxed. Like I was watching other stands and how they interact with people. And they, a lot of people were sat down doing their own thing, filling in invoices, you know, um, on their desks, maybe on their iPads, uh, getting to business. They, they didn't look disinterested. They weren't sat there on their phones, but they were not greeting every single person that come to their stand, which I like because if I was going around um, looking at things in the show, I wouldn't want everyone to be like, hi, hi, hi. I would want to look at the cards first, then say hi to the exhibitor and then chat about um, things. So I liked that. Also, people didn't sit down in Spring Fair. We all had seats and stools, but it was like, do not sit down. Under any circumstances, do not sit down. Um, but in top draw, uh, towards the end of the day and during quiet periods, people did sit down. So that was nice. It meant my legs didn't break like last time. I wanted to use my iPad for invoices and stuff. So I tried to do that during the first order, but I found that this was really slow and I was slow and it wasn't optimized properly. So since then I used clipboard and pen and paper invoices, which I actually got laughed at for doing in Spring Fair, but everyone did this in top draw. So it's like, what do you do? But the paper invoices actually worked better for me, so I will do that next time. Um, I forgot a step ladder, so I'll be taking a step ladder next time because that made it extra hard to put up our vinyl signs and the shelves and all the high pieces. Um, keep the vinyl signs to a minimum. I actually got three signs, but I only prepped two. Uh, I don't think you needed three because it would, it would have been overkill. Um, I had two tables, but I think I would only take one next time and maybe have a shelf, like a large Ikea shelf to put the stationery on. So people can walk into my stand rather than just walk past it. Better storage. So at the moment I have two Ikea boxes underneath my table, which is nice, but people had proper like furniture. Maybe I can source one from a charity shop or something like that, just to put underneath the desk and store like bags and coats and drinks and snacks and, and stuff. I would get the cards that I wasn't happy with printed professionally. Here's an example of the star card. It's actually a bit brighter now, but in the show, the colors were just faded. But I've noticed since then that my printer settings weren't correct. I was printing in CMYK, which is what you should print in. But I find that for me, when I print in RGB, it prints so much better. And I printed everything in CMYK and I should have printed it in RGB at home. So for outsourcing printers, print in CMYK. Um, but for me personally, at home, I print in RGB because it's just brighter and more true to the screen, weirdly. I would change my shelves. I wouldn't have them flat against the wall. I'd have them coming out and I'd cut a ridge in them so I can slot the cards in so that I wouldn't need to blue tack them. I was thinking maybe I would paint my stand as well, it's like a pink. I painted my stand in Spring Fair um, I didn't paint it in this one, which is cheaper. You actually have to pay to paint your stand unless you paint it back white at the end of the show, which seems like a faff. I mean, at the end of the show, all you want to do is crash. Yeah, and then if I did paint my walls pink, I would leave the shelves the natural wood color. So it means I wouldn't have to paint my shelves white. I guess I could have done that anyway, but I just wanted it all white for the cards to stand out nicely. I don't know. And then the last day we explored London. We went to Covent Garden, Chinatown and the museum and it was exhausting. But lovely. But that is my roundup of the entire experience. I can see this has gone on for 24 minutes. So I'm gonna have to cut this down quite dramatically. But yeah, I took this little notebook with me and filled it full of people's details that I met. No one took business cards this time. Most people I spoke to, when I asked like, do they have a business card? Uh, can I take your details? Everyone was like, I don't have my card with me, but I can write down my details. 
which was um, different because in Spring Fair, everyone just swapped business cards. Maybe this is a COVID thing. Maybe it's just people forgot, I don't know. Um, but I have everyone's details in here and I've just been following up with everyone since the show, you know, saying it was nice to meet you, da 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 da. Um, yeah, that is, that is my roundup. Now, now I have to get on with editing two vlogs. So this one and the one previously I haven't done yet and get on with the day. So catching up with Etsy and emails and freelance and all the other work that's not top draw or wholesale related. So wish me luck. If you made it to the end of this vlog, uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed my experience and coming along with me so i'm gonna end the vlog now so thank you so much for watching and i will see you soon